The child you see on the screen reading the popular science fiction magazine Amazing Stories will go on to shape the next 100 years of science fiction literature and artificial intelligence ethics. Isaac Asimov Isaac was born on January 2, 1920, in the small village of Petrovichy in Russia's Smolensk Oblast. By the time he was born, his family had already started preparing to emigrate to America. Born to a poor family, Asimov moved to America with his family in 1923. Growing up in Brooklyn, Isaac Asimov's scientific talent was evident from a young age. By the age of 28, he had earned bachelor's and doctorate degrees in chemistry from Columbia University. Remarkably, during this time, he had already been writing science fiction for 10 years. However, all the stories he had written over that decade were rejected. That is, until March 13, 1939, when Amazing Stories, the magazine he had admired since childhood, published his first story, Marooned Off Vesta. From that moment on, Asimov was officially a writer. It was hardly a conventional career path for a scientist with a doctorate from one of the country's most prestigious universities to choose science fiction writing. Did his mother or father ever say, Son, leave this writing business behind and focus on your respectable career? We'll never know. But what we do know is that by 1950, Asimov had already published his first widely acclaimed book, Pebble in the Sky. Did he know at the time that he was laying the foundation for the Foundation series, which would make him famous worldwide? It's hard to say, but this is how Asimov's writing journey began. With the success of his first book, Asimov compiled three robot stories he had written in 1941 and republished them as a single book by the end of 1950. Thus, the famous three laws of robotics, previously known only to a limited number of science fiction enthusiasts in America, were discovered by the world. In fact, Asimov's famous three laws of robotics first appeared in his short story Runaround, published in Astounding Science Fiction in 1942. This shows that Asimov had formulated the three laws of robotics by 1942 at the latest. However, understanding when and in what context these laws were created is crucial to grasping Asimov's mindset. Fortunately, Asimov was meticulous about details. True to his nature, he left the task of writing his biography to no one else and published the early Asimov in 1972. Thanks to this book, we know that Runaround, the story in which he first introduced the three laws of robotics, was completed on October 17, 1941. The year 1941 was a time when Germany was storming through World War II and Nazi fear was palpable everywhere. On October 17, 1941, Pearl Harbor had not yet been attacked, and the United States had not entered the war. Thus, Asimov formulated the three laws of robotics in an environment where the world was engulfed in a great war, but he lived in a relatively safe country. At that time, communication was still conducted via telegraph and letters. Telephones were not widespread, and concepts like mass communication were not even imagined yet. Therefore, the number of people a robot could potentially harm was limited to its immediate surroundings. Furthermore, not only was software for robots non-existent, but the very concept of software itself had yet to emerge. When Asimov wrote these laws, he was envisioning an ideal of robots serving and not harming humans with foresight far ahead of his time. This is how Asimov formulated the three laws of robotics. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. By 1941, Asimov had drawn the ethical boundaries of independent decision-making capabilities for non-human entities at the highest level possible under the circumstances of his time. Moreover, he embedded a deeper subtext within these rules, possibly more profound than the rules themselves. This foundational set of robot ethics has profoundly shaped the relationship between humanity and technology. 44 years later, Isaac Asimov developed the concept of the Zeroff Law in 1985, which was featured in his book Robots and Empire. This law elevated the concept of serving humanity to a higher level. 
A robot may not harm humanity or, through inaction, allow humanity to come to harm. Asimov's vision, if understood correctly and if the underlying text of these laws is comprehended, continues to shed light not only on the technological and ethical debates of his era, but also on those of today and the future. The mission statement of OpenAI emphasizes ensuring that general artificial intelligence benefits all of humanity. Similarly, Google's Gemini and IBM's Copilot share almost identical mission approaches with slight differences. It seems that today's most prominent AI companies are following in Asimov's footsteps. However, there may be a significant point overlooked in this approach, which we will revisit later. In fact, Asimov's Xerof law summarizes and consolidates all his rules. Whether this set of rules, created in 1941 and completed in 1985, is still applicable in 2024 and beyond is worth exploring. In Asimov's story Runaround, where the laws first appear, Robot Speedy refuses a task that would harm itself based on the third law and falls into a state of indecision. However, failing to complete this task would result in the deaths of three humans. What's notable here is that Speedy has no awareness of the potential deaths of the three humans. The lack of awareness immediately pushes the rules into a loop. The most crucial requirement for any rule set to govern a non-human intelligent entity is the awareness of the entity bound by the rules. The presence or absence of self-awareness in a non-human intelligent entity determines whether it can be governed by a set of rules. This is precisely what OpenAI and other AI companies seem to be missing. The core message, which Asimov did not include explicitly in his rules, but embedded in the subtext of all his stories, is precisely this. Regardless of the rules set you write, systems governed by these rules will inevitably fall into loops unless they possess human-like empathy and understanding. The central theme of Asimov's first story, which introduced the rules, was actually this. It is impossible to govern intelligent systems without self-awareness solely through a set of rules. When we consider this subtext and the ability of AI applications to spread worldwide in just one second, how applicable are Asimov's laws to today's AI? Attempting to quantify this possibility, you would have to stop at the very beginning. The concept of not harming humanity inherently includes the question of which humanity it's expected that the nations coding these systems will favor their own societies. Even now, highly advanced AI-powered weapons kill many people. A more individual example of this issue is the case of autonomous Tesla vehicles and whether they will protect the driver or the pedestrian in an accident. Applying Asimov's laws to this example leads to significant ethical dilemmas when reaching the first law. If you attempt to apply Asimov's laws without understanding the subtext, loops are inevitable. Returning to the earlier example, when an autonomous car is about to crash, the problem of whom to save arises, the driver or the pedestrian. Applying Asimov's first law makes decision-making difficult because the laws do not account for human emotion and ethical evaluation. This situation demonstrates that Asimov's laws are insufficient for today's world and that human empathy is necessary in decision-making processes. Governing AI solely through a set of rules leaves them inadequate in ethical and moral conflicts. If the pedestrian is saved, the passenger will die. If the passenger is saved, the pedestrian will die. In such a case, applying this rule set to the autonomous vehicle would result in an immediate loop, rendering it invalid. The passenger, seeing that the autonomous system is locked, attempts to steer the vehicle toward the pedestrian. However, the second law would then come into effect, refusing the command, and the system would remain locked. In reality, if you ask what Tesla does in such a situation, the specific decision-making processes and priorities of these algorithms have not been publicly disclosed, or at least we couldn't find them. When Asimov addressed robot laws, he tried to convey that the relationship between humans and robots cannot be governed solely by rules and suddenly found himself known as the father of robot laws, probably. See you in our next video.